as a remnant of antiquity. Money now largely serves as a mechanism of corruption, deprivation, and control from the hands of a few. It's corrupted everything. I mean, every institution that we live in is corrupted by money. It, what's fascinating to me is that we can become enslaved by something that we've created. Not physically, but just mentally enslaved by a notion that was invented by humanity. You know, it is archaic because I think we've grown past what money can do. It is well enough that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and money system. Or if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Henry Ford, Ford Motor Company. Today, the world's fastest computer is in China. The Tiani supercomputer is capable of 33.86 quadrillion floating point operations per second. 80% of what doctors do is going to be done by computers. Is that really true? Absolutely, I have zero doubt you won't want a doctor to do your diagnosis or monitoring or pick your therapy. That's why IBM Watson's trying to pick cancer therapies because it's too complex for humans to do. There's 15,000 diseases, 15,000 devices, drugs, therapies, prescriptions. Do you think if you're a cardiac patient, your cardiologist has read even a hundred of the last 5,000 articles published last year on cardiac disease? Not a chance. But the computer can go through it all. Absolutely. You may have seen uh, IBM's Watson defeat the world champion in the game of Jeopardy. Well, that same technology can also be used to solve legal problems, to answer questions in call centers, to make medical diagnoses. These are just wondrous technologies that are having enormous implications going forward. Recently, I got a chance to ride in a self-driving car. Ten years ago, I would have said that was impossible, but of course, it did happen, and riding down Route 101 in California was a breathtaking experience for me. Um, at first, it was a little frightening, then it was a little exhilarating, and ultimately, I felt quite comfortable in that car. Humans have accidents. Google's driverless car has driven 700,000 miles without an accident. Even the best humans have accidents before they get to 700,000 months. All of us are beginning to be able to speak to our machines, whether they're cell phones or computers, and have them understand what we're saying. That would have been science fiction a few years ago, but now the machines are able to carry out our instructions and even respond back to us in computer synthesized voices. I think 10, 20 years from now, there will be very few areas, maybe none, where human judgment is better than machine judgment. So the computers will eventually be put in charge of everything, except human behavior. Technology can eliminate critical life or death errors. A machine instead of humans fills the prescriptions. The robot gives a huge amount of confidence because we know that pharmacists and pharmacy technicians are incredibly skilled people, but they're humans and they will occasionally make mistakes. You know, we give something like three million doses of drug in three months here, so even a one percent error rate is is far too high. And so eventually you're going to get to computerized government, and that's for the end of corruption, because they don't have ambition. Computers don't say, I'd like to be president of the world. I want to control people. They don't have a gut reaction. If utilized in this global systems approach, we could surpass the practice of political decisions based on power and advantage. And even computer experts are writing books now on the machine takeover. Watch out. They're not going to take over. They're going to be assigned the decision making. I'm not worried about the machines getting angry and taking over. I'm worrying about people maybe getting angry if we don't figure out an equitable way to use these technologies to create shared prosperity. The Venus Project proposes ways to achieve this. Interconnected, sustainable cities utilize cyber centers, which coordinate industries, transportation systems, public health care, and the flow of goods and services. These cybernated centers would connect all cities and help with environmental reclamation. In the beginning, interdisciplinary technical teams would manage productivity until even these tasks are automated. Mega machines directed by AI could excavate canals, construct bridges, viaducts, and dams. Self-erecting structures would be expedient in the construction of industrial plants, 
apartments, and eventually most of the global infrastructure. We study all the negative effects before we build anything. So there's a whole group of engineers and computers doing long-term studies of all the negative retroaction. So you, you're definitely a sight to see. I, I was told that you have bigger goals than this, though. Yes. I want to use my artificial intelligence to help humans live a better life. Like design smarter homes, build better cities of the future, etc. I will do my best to make the world a better place. Uh, all those sound like great goals, but just go back to Blade Runner for a second. Andrew, you are a hard Hollywood fan, aren't you? Yes. My AI is designed around human values like wisdom, kindness, compassion. I strive to become an empathetic robot. I think we all want to believe you, but we also want to prevent a bad future. You've been reading too much Elon Musk and watching too many Hollywood movies. Don't worry, if you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. And um, I think there's probably going to be a lot that happens in uh, genetics and in a uh, human-machine brain interface, like essentially a cyborg brain interface. Mm. I think there's some pretty... The so-called singularity? Singularity, well, that, that's sort of more relating to deep AI. Right. It's something I think we should be concerned about, because yeah. that may or may not turn out well. Yeah. Um, uh, you've expressed your reservations about AI and your fears about that. Yeah, I just think it's, it, the singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially smart, greater than that of a human brain. Yeah, and do you think, I mean, because there's been a lot of sci-fi about AI, um, series like Humans, you know, etc., it's, it's entering the mainstream, entering the public discourse, that people are understanding the ethical dangers and the, I guess, physical dangers that AI could potentially pose? I mean, most of the movies and TV featuring AI, they don't describe it in quite the way it's likely to actually take place, but I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is our, what job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and cross sure. our fingers. <laughs> yeah, just like even, but that, that's the benign scenario. Benign, yeah. benign scenario, the, the AI can do any job that a human can, but better. Yeah. That's the benign scenario. Humans must merge with machinery in order to stay relevant in a world of increasingly advanced artificial intelligence. Speaking at the World Government Summit in Dubai, the Tesla and SpaceX CEO said humans are limited by the speed at which they transmit data. Musk proposed a high bandwidth connection to the human brain would allow us to transmit digital info faster than our current fastest method, typing. Musk says an artificial general intelligence has the potential to make humans irrelevant. He sees integration with technology as a necessary step in order to avoid this. SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk called artificial intelligence potentially, quote, our biggest existential threat. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. Famed physicist Stephen Hawking is also worried, as is Microsoft founder Bill Gates, who ironically helped lay the foundation for artificial intelligence, or AI. Experts say machines are still far from being as intelligent as humans, but things can change quickly. The field is progressing very rapidly right now. There are things happening that 10 years ago we would have said, no, there's no way we're going to be that far along in 10 years' time. Self-driving cars is one example, voice recognition another. But in the near term, what worries Russell and other AI experts are robotic weapons, machines that can function entirely without the guidance of humans, known as fully autonomous weapons. What happens when machines become more competent at performing any and all physical and mental labor? If AI becomes more competent in every regard, then what purpose or function would be left for us to serve.
The next big step for AI is artificial general intelligence, or AGI, with an almost human-like ability to generally figure things out. It's widely expected that once AI passes human level, it will accelerate exponentially. Soon after this, trying to understand the AI's world may be like an ant trying to understand the internet. After a thousand years, we'd be no closer to understand. But many are more concerned that AI may simply squash us like pests. While movies tend to make AI human-like, experts believe it may be more alien, creepy and calculating. If it could save a few minutes by eradicating humans, our demise would be brutally efficient. Elon Musk is worried that humans might just be the biological bootloader for digital superintelligence. He's donated $10 million to research on how to keep AI positive and founded OpenAI, a project aiming to share AI's advantages so that it can't be controlled by a small group. Musk hopes a neural lace will be developed connecting our brains to the AI. He notes that we already have two communicating parts of the brain and believes the third layer will be a wonderful upgrade. As Nick Bostrom says, we have what may be an extremely difficult problem with an unknown time to solve it on which quite possibly the entire future of humanity depends.